Hello and welcome to today's video on how to use the Hatsons Easy Mold Making Silicon to make your own molds at home. Ever since the lockdown has begun, we have got a lot of time to rethink the way our business is done and the types of different materials that we are using on a daily basis. We wanted to empower all you artists out there to do more. All the products out there in the market were of crazy ratios like 100 is to 1 and they just sounded really complicated. So today I have for you guys our Hacksons Easy Mold Making Silicon which is a very easy 1 is to 1 ratio, very easy to mix and the best part about it is that it does not require use of external equipment. So today I just like to introduce you all to the product. Just show you all how you can do a lot with this product from the comfort of your house. I mean we are all in, stuck together in this lockdown. So let me just jump into the mold making process. So um, here we have uh, the part A and part B. Uh, this is a 200 gram pack. Um, so each pack has 100 grams. And uh, let's go ahead and start mixing the product. So simple paper glass. Um, you can on a, so again, uh, it's a 1 is to 1 ratio by weight. So we'll use a weight scale. So um, I'm looking to make about, um, let's make 40 grams in the first batch. So I'll use 20 grams of the part A. And 20 grams of part B. So I've just gone over to the 21 gram mark. So I'm just going to redo 21 now. So this is a translucent color, um, but just like resin, you have to keep mixing it till it's one homogeneous mixture. What you're looking to do is mix thoroughly for about two to three minutes and um, you'd always be good to go. You need to remember to scrape the side, scrape the bottom, they're all mixed up properly. So once the part A and the part B have been mixed together, you have a working time of about 20 to 25 minutes. Once it's been poured, you can use the mold in about three hours, two and a half to three hours. So now once you have it mixed together, you can set it down to mature a bit. And I'm just starting to let go of bubbles. But I mean, this material does it anyways. You'll see the bubbles just rise up to the top and pop. And then what you can do is you can just move the material around in this manner. What that does is again, it helps the bubble, bubbles rise up to the top. So today I'm going to be making a mold of these uh, amazing gemstone crystals that I have. These are amethyst ones. This is an Indian Himalayan uh, crystal. You might think it's complicated to make its structure. You, you might think that, you know, um, it sounds complicated. Maybe even it looks complicated in videos, but trust me, it's not. I'm going to make a mold of it in this glass today and I'll show you how simple it is. Um, so yeah, what I'm just going to do is take a toothbrush, a dry one and just brush the, um, the crystal a bit just to get away any loose dust that there is. And obviously first you'd want to check if it fits properly in the glass. And so we want to be getting a mold, an impression of this surface, right? So obviously we put that facing upwards and then we'll pour our resin into it from the top. So I've tested that it fits. So now what I'm going to simply do simply do is that you can take some of the silicone on this toothbrush and just brush the top of it. So what this is going to ensure is that so when there's a thin coat of silicone that's been applied on the surface, the air bubbles rise up and they break quite easily as compared to a thicker pore. Just by applying this light coat of the material all over the piece it just ensures that we're going to get lesser air bubbles
I don't know if you can see these this on camera, guys, but you see that the air bubbles are bursting on their own. So once we're doing done doing that, I'm gonna place this in the center. Now, because the weight of the gemstone is way more than the amount of silicon that's going to go into it, I'm not sticking the gemstone to the bottom of the glass. But if it is a lightweight thing that you're making a mold out of, and you think that the weight of the silicon is going to exceed the weight of the of your master, then you're better off gluing it from the bottom and, and fastening it and fixing it. So what you want to do is that we're not going to pour the silicon directly onto the piece. So what we're looking for is that the, the silicon should fall next to the master and we just want the material to fall down straight to the bottom of the cup and then let it rise. We do not pour over the master. Just make sure of that and pour from as high as possible. So what that's going to ensure is that all the air bubbles that are there in the glass, they're going to come off while we pour. I'm just going to sit down for this bit. Yeah, it's perfect. This is how you just have to let it gently fall down right next to the master. So yeah, you can see that it's all poured. It's a little nerve-wracking in this translucent color because you can see all the bubbles. But they'll go. You don't need to worry about them. So you'd see a lot of people um, shaking the mold, using a, something to vibrate the bubbles out. But as we haven't stuck the master to the bottom, we can't shake like that, but I'm going to go ahead and just give it some taps like this to get whatever bubbles out I can. And because the material is translucent, I actually can see where the master is right now. And so I can do this without making sure it's moving. So now I'm just going to set this aside. So this will cure in about two and a half hours. We're going to have to wait for that result. You guys won't have to. It's all going to be recorded on camera. Y'all don't have to wait for two and a half hours with us. I'm just going to set this aside. So for now, I'm just going to show you some of the molds that we had made um, yesterday while we were experimenting. And here you can see, um, I don't know if you can catch it, see it on camera, but the shine, the gloss right in the mold. And this is what we have casted out of that. You can even see how glossy the mold is. I mean, silicon looking this glossy, I've not seen it before. And you can see, I mean, once they are made, you don't need to be worried about anything. You can go all out on them. You can go all out on it. You don't need to be scared. I mean, this stuff is really durable. You can also see some of the molds that we have, some of the uh, castings we have made out of these gemstones. So these two are the same. And this has been made in clear resin. You can see the gloss on it. You can see the gloss on this. And this one's been made of this. And these are some other crystals that we have casted with resin. A nice cool blue color. So how this stuff works is that firstly the silicon, even the impressions of your fingerprint, I mean this stuff is that accurate that it even cap captures that perfectly. And uh, how the gloss, so everyone wonders, you know, how can resin get this kind of gloss? So resin is naturally any which way is very glossy, right? What the silicon does is that it will take an impression of the master just for what it is. So the back side of this, the underneath side of this stone is quite matte, if you can see. And even the sides are quite matte, but the top is very glossy. So what the silicon does is just the way this material is. If this is matte, then it's gonna capture that in a very, very matte manner. If this, the side is matte, you can see here once again over here. You can see over here how matte this is. So 
you can see how mad this part is just as mad as compared to the master and the top just look at the gloss of the top it just looks look at the reflections i can almost see colors that aren't even in this stone i mean i can see dark blues i can see violet so that's just all because of the actual gloss and reflection of the original gemstone so when you are designing a master i mean i mean from a jewelry point of view if you take this really glossy gemstone and you i don't know you can make a border out of silver or brass and when you make it out of resin this part's going to be glossy and this is going to be matte if you make it matte or if you put wood over here then it's going to take the grains of the wood as the texture so it's really cool to experiment with and as i've shown you it's really really very easy to use also this big piece that you see um if you guys uh, like this video and subscribe i think i'll surely do a live while pouring some silicone over this so please encourage us to do that so it's been 3 hours plus now since we poured the silicone and this is the most sat satisfying part of the project where we get to demold this and it's a lot of fun doing this trust me guys so what i'm going to just do is that tear the paper cup around the silicone just makes it very easy to demold and then gently that's it that's it that's done and i don't know if you can notice but it even takes on the impression of the paper from the cup so all of that waxy bit you can see all of that and if you have a scissor around you can cut all the excess off just tidy up tidy just tidy it up a bit so there is a layer of silicon that's formed over our piece but right? it just try to wiggle it out which they should be fine or then you can just slip that up if your master gets submerged in resin then you can just cut a bit of the resin from the top and then we can get the crystal out just wiggle it up and there you go so yeah there we have our mold ready and as you can see after 3 hours it's perfectly ready mm yeah very good results if you zoom in over here you'll be able to see all the gloss of the mold and yeah obviously to to see the results of this you have to pour resin in it once you pour your resin in it you're going to see brilliant results so you can see that the crystal is totally out of the mold very easy very gently and you can go all out on the mold also tough it is quite tough you won't face a problem that and um you know you i'm sure you'll be happy with these results so that's it from us for today guys see you soon